<laughs> I'm so ready duct for tape this. To, to, duct tape to the wall until they need him next time. I think this has been a really, really interesting best of three. And I mean, best of all, even after this, we've got Fury and MRBR. So we got so much more coming up on the channel here. You don't want to go anywhere. Oh, yeah. But right now, it's Astralis going to be on the CT side. G2 on the T side. And they're pushing middle in the pistol round. Oh, it's going to be a war and a battle in the middle. Meg is two headshots. Device as well, but a little bit of a return. Nico and Nexa making it possible still for G2 to win the round. But that was absolutely wild. Nearly getting shot at the back. Unbelievable. Did Magus just take down two people on his own from there? Looks like. Wow. The hero. Well then, there's so much time that it's still very hard to know how this will play out. Yep. Because if, uh, if G2 spread out like this, you can see already that Astralis have to cover a lot of ground. And right now, Astralis, they've still left Magus alone over towards B. So if G2 group up and go to B, fantastic. It's a 2v1 that favors them. Life is hunky-dory. They are looking for them. They'd love to find just a stray CT somewhere that they can pick up. It's still a two-on-two -two retake. I, it's, it's it's a tough one. You almost want to see Astralis just group up as three. But Megas with the spot, and it is going to be the move up. Banana here from G2 towards that B site. When is the rotation going to come through? The fake! Look at this play. Mind games on mind games right now. Zipnix now rotating over, but he does not commit. Megas is telling his teammates that... He saw them in Banana, but they aren't on the site. I'm actually really impressed that, that Astralis stood their ground on the A-bomb site like that. They're waiting it out. Look at those floor. 20 seconds. G2 probably right now feel like, yeah, you know what? We Surely one will have rotated away, but they're definitely wrong about that. If any kills come through here for Astralis, they're not going to get close to this bomb plant at all. A little bit of a hiccup here. No connections going to the site. Six seconds. They've got a good grenade in there, but it's not done yet. Still a USP on Nico. Could he come alive yet again? No, instead, it's Glaive to take him down. And I think Nexa is going to have an impossible task ahead of him. Trying his best, but he's going to get triple teamed at the end. And Astralis will win the pistol. All right. I think missed that last one. We saw that, Magus. Oh, nope. He got him. <laughs> quick, quick make fun of him. That was a steady target for the chicken. Tweet at him or something. This is the map with the poultry. With the animals. Maybe you need a snack, Anders. You know, it's, uh, it's hard work in a pistol. Guy did some, guy got his kills. He should get some chicken. Good for him. But that's a 1-0 lead now for Astral. is picking up the pistol here versus G2. And G2, right off the back of it. Give Nico the AK. Allow him to apply the pressure. Shank your teammate in the back. Kenny, starting the round at 70 HP. Yeah, that'd be rough. It's kind of surprising they even actually got the bomb pound down, I'm not going to lie. Um, I think if, if any one of them would have connected with a USP shot going into it, it, they don't even get that. And it's because of that bomb plant, of course, that they are able to buy what they can in this round. So, not, I thought that was going to be trouble over at Banana, but they didn't really take much damage. No, they didn't. You're right. And the Molotov there. Very surprising stuff. So, I mean, the, the, the thing is, is that you're expecting Nico to keep going aggressive in Banana like that and trying to pry it open with that AK, try and take Astralis by surprise. But instead, they just decided to back off once they forced the nades over there. And now it's going to be mid-control for G2. And they could set up for a pinch through CT. It's looking like it. The bomb is still hanging around in mid right now. Could swing either way. If they get this kill over at Library on Device, this A bomb site's going to fall so quick. Because yeah. those two people that are left are going to be in trouble. Very important the Device stays alive now. They can maybe call a little bit of backup. I think Glaive is running in from the B bomb site. So that at least has given them a you know, fair warning of what's coming. But again, that one headshot I think would have made the round almost certainly 37 seconds. G2 trying to get into the second round and make sure Astralis don't go any kind of crazy roll. Great pick off there, and Magus down to the pit. He's going to get overwhelmed. 28 seconds, that MP5, it does nothing to the box. Can't really wallbang with it like that. Nico nearly getting the kill, but it'll be Glaive to save his friend at least for a second. And now it's a 2 on 3 and a bomb plant for G2. Ridiculous. How low that clock gets, and G2 able to win out in that fight. I think one of them got caught with a nade in his hand if that was Dupree. But uh, this is just going to be real nasty here as it's an almost an impossible situation. Glaive in the open trying to create some room here for Zipnix to maneuver. Two players in the pit for G2. They're going to make life very difficult for Zipnix. And Glaive caught in the open means G2 pick up the second round of this first half. Tying it up one to one. Two M4 save to boot. One.
disaster for Astralis. They had a setup here that should have been able to handle this push. Well, yeah, maybe, but I think I think it really highlights like it's just an ever-present danger on that A-bomb site. When you let the T side get all the way to the end of the hallway and all the way to the hay cart, the, the split second from from everything being peaceful and quiet and, and just all out war on that side is so... Oh, oh, God. He actually got that shot. Well, yeah, but it's, so, it's such a short time that you, you can't really react. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that's that's something that Astralis have to think about in the, in the future. Is how much map control do they let them have on that side? And I think it's partly just, you know, Astralis, no, they knew they didn't have that great weapon, so they probably didn't want to fight for it. But that was the result, pretty much. Nice shot on Kenny, though. Makes things a little bit fun. Can we have another one? Maybe a deagle this time. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> this would be anonymous. Ignominous? It's a weird word to say, but uh, it would be very unfortunate, we'll put it that way, for G2 if they were to lose against what's, what is essentially a, an eco. Shot comes in, there's it makes over the top. Oh, no way! Dupree sets it up, takes Nexa as well. One on three now. Nico, he is stuck on the B site and he is boxed in. No more options. Device has picked up an M4. He's got Kevlar as well. And they have plenty of time for that smoke to clear and move in together here. Astralis going into the retake. They have that one flashbang as well. I don't know if they want to use it or just find him straight away. No kits uh, for obvious reasons. And yeah, I think they're hoping to see him somewhere. That's the only thing is the element of surprise. Maybe get one quick kill. That's going to be the headshot. Yeah, he's being just into that corner push all the time. He's going to get one more. Oh, tapping away. What a genius one versus three from Nico yet again. He's so good. He is so good. Astralis, all right. There's so much there, but for Nico to just sit and run that clock down, and Astralis are expecting Nico to make the play. Nico to be the one. Yeah. Except that he waits just long enough to catch Astralis, get antsy, and say, okay, now we're going to have to go and get him. We're running out of time. We don't have a kit. And that's when Nico peaks. They the just, game sense. I mean, they just needed to see him, but that was wild. He is just a mechanical god. It's, you can just tell. And yes, I get all like all the little asterisks you put in. Say, oh, well, they didn't have everything they wanted. And, like, there's stuff missing. Yeah, all great, but but it doesn't change the fact that doing that is just very, very tricky. Oh, it's Sousa the pre. Outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous that he gets that. So two to one. Those are the kinds of magic rounds, though. That's almost like a catwalk round from Dust Two, Anders, that you've been uh, so concerned with. Uh, on Astralis' behalf, where they really let G2 pick up steam. I mean, this that could be a round of kind of clutch that turns it around here for G2 and just gives it all to them. It's going to put some serious pressure on Astralis at the beginning of this half. Astralis hard, hard eco, apart from Dupree with the, uh, the, the Zeus. Okay, fair enough. He's got that going on. Boost in the back of the site to try and look over. It's a fun idea. Close. It did nothing at all, but... He almost got it. Yeah, well, I mean... He's been there, right? Five HP on Emenek. Oh, yeah, I don't know. They're not winning. Yeah. Ah, no, Hunter. Uh, he oh, he wanted the Zeus. There we go. All right. If you watched this map being played between MIBR and Astralis, that was the third map as well when they were playing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the lessons from watching that was just how tricky things can get on the CT side when you don't have the grenades you need to make life hard for the T's when they're trying to fight for banana and all the rest of it. MIBR got sort of stuck into that for a little while and it was really hard for them to, to bring it back. And you could see here at Charlotte, I mean, yeah, they got grenades, but what, two Molotovs, some HGs, but then they're not going to be having the same exchange on banana as they will later on if they actually start to, to bring that money uh, on their side. So so right now, G2 are going to have, probably you can tell, next is ready and waiting, saying, well, there's no, there's no one really doing much. A little bit of a late grenade does two damage. But yes, I, th I think this is where th a lot of things will be easier for them than it will be later on. Just focused right now at Astralis and the patience. Being low on the... They just decline. Apart from that HE, they just decline to spend any utility on Banana this round. Yeah. Instead, they're just going to be completely focused on holding the site itself. 
And G2 are looking to take full advantage of this. Look at all the real estate that they have. They can just set up, no problem, on this B site. You do have Dupree, who's close to rotate over through Arch. He can get there fairly quickly to bolster this defense on B. They're relocating. I mean, it's, it's scary. They're both on the other side. Got some flashes to try and slow it down. But I don't think this will be easy. I think G2 have got a very, very good sense of this. They could smoke off Glaive, and then the question is, could he do anything to help out Sip inside of the bomb site? There's just no info here at all. No, there really isn't. And here we go. 27 seconds. They move, well, they move past each other inside of the smoke. Unfortunately for Glaive, there's a fiery squad waiting on the other side. The pre showing up just in time. 18 seconds. Quite low on time. That's making me worried. Kenny, he's still not putting the bomb down. Are they going to try and stop him? 10 seconds left. They should. They should swing for this fight, and they're not quite going to do it. They can't catch him. And that is now, I think, yeah, time to retreat. Maggie's not going to get a chance. Actually, none of them will get a chance. Huge, huge round out of G2 right now. Wow, Dupree's able to take one with him before Kenny gets him on the flank. Triple kill for Nexa in the round. And while that's... a you could see the second guessing, but right now I think this is uh, this is coming back to bite Astralis, this lack of knowledge, uh, lack of info that they're having on this CT side. Uh, the A take from G2 earlier that you pointed out where they were, G2 were able to just go all the way up mid, practically all the way up short before anybody on Astralis has any idea where they are. And we just saw that again here from uh, G2 on Banana. They're on the site before Astralis even have any idea that it's happening. They've got one yeah. guy throwing nades, so they so Astralis, even then, they don't know what it is. They could just think it's a fake at that point. They're only seeing one set of nades come out. Yeah, you're right. They're, they're not seeing a lot at all. And they don't have anything to counter it with, right? They can't throw down Molotovs to buy time. They just, all they can really do is just hope to get some kills, probably through smoke, even. And I don't know. If Sip would have landed like a straight shot from that from the coffins to get a kill there, and Glaive could have taken out one for the smoke, yeah, I mean then you can defend the bomb site, but that's that's putting a lot on on some pretty random elements of the game. Sip. Oh, he's a bullet away. Super close. And Hunter is making sure that they're not being shot in the back. So G2 back to that methodical play that we were really enjoying on Dust 2. It was really cool to see. And Astralis just don't have the money to, to fight. I mean, that, that's they're, they're running into that problem right here. Shot from Glaive. I mean, that's good. Getting that kill. That time the flash worked. He set it up earlier. Now G2 are getting cold feet. They're starting to second guess themselves on this B site. And we'll see the rotation over here. They know that nobody's pushed down from A. Yeah. So there's that to go off of. But uh, it is looking like they want to rotate over towards A. 30 seconds on the clock. G2 could probably just go straight up short and get it done. They could, but Magus is in the pit with a deagle. If he lands a straight deagle shot, then it's time to hold your breath. He did see them. Gonna put out a little bit of grenade there. Smoke to block him off. The free moving closer. There's the shot. Bomb down. 16 seconds. Device also in the corner, and he can't stay alive. Man, I mean, Magus delivering on that one. That's all they needed, but G2 find a way to prevail, and oh, more credit to them. That was, that was kind of tr close. I mean, that could have gone horribly wrong. Yeah, you called for it, Anders. Nearly pulled it off. Sip definitely needs to save the uh, the rifle. I, I, was, I don't know if he's looking for an exit here, but I, I don't know why he would try and do anything else. Well, I guess they're going to have money to buy. I still wish he would have saved the AK. Regardless, it is going to be 1 and 5 in favor of T2 right here. T side Inferno, and yeah, I mean, some of these rounds are close. Still very interested to see how this will play out once they have the money that they need Astralis. Like that is, I still think, one of the big factors. Definitely not the only one, but it's uh, something that they're going to be looking for. So they have a couple of more Molotovs this time. Fewer flashbangs. They have, in fact, only three flashbangs. That's kind of rare. But that's what they could afford. <laughs> oh, wow. All of the mollies. Kenny down to half HP. He hasn't even seen anybody yet. Just getting uh, orbital bombarded right now. That HE follow-up. Oh, I thought I thought Nexo was about to walk right into that one. Still, 5-1. to one. G2 on that T side looking fantastic so far in this first half of Inferno. I was definitely expecting a bit more here from Astralis, but now is their time to shine. They had all the nades. They have the rifles. They've done a tremendous amount of damage to G2 just through use of utility. And again, it's looking like G2 are drifting back over towards Banana. Wait. Yeah. Well, th this is a change of strategy from Astralis. 
Yeah, just having device there as the early uh, guard and making sure. I mean, that that makes a lot of sense. He has a smoke. If if he spots anyone, if he doesn't just go straight down, he could fall back and smoke it off, and it should be all right at the very least. Next to do this, though, no, it's a quick flick coming out from device. Now it's almost like they kind of have to go. Kenny setting up a smoke towards the library. Going to be flashing all the way over the building. And Magus, nice headshot. And two of them are low now. The grenade, oh, that's going to blow them up. Oh, it does almost nothing. I don't know where that went. It looked like it should have been at least a kill. Regardless, they are pretty safe in this moment. Jumping right down. It's Nico to drop to free. Wasn't quite flashed enough. And that'll be the round. Astral is handling all of that quite well. And now finally, they're starting to build that money. It is going to make a difference. Such an important round for them to keep as many people alive as well, Astralis. They needed a one-sided round right here, just so that they could start establishing a little bit of money uh, in that bank. It was starting to get a little scary. And now, okay, this is it. G2 calling the timeout. And, well, right now, it is probably just going to be a bit of a breather on their side. Matic going to be taking it full advantage to uh, get this team rallied up. Nico so focused. Well, I mean, they they have a good lead. They have money to buy. Stralis have built up a, a tiny bit of money, but it's not that much. It's enough for the for the grenades they need. That's the that's the good news. But it's it's still so early on that if G2 win this upcoming round, Astralis are going to be put right back into uh, a very weird position. Well, you got to be sure that Malek has been picking up on the fact that Astralis are information starved in these rounds. So how do you take advantage of that? How do you play for that? Do you just kind of sit and hold angles on your side because eventually Astralis are going to have to try and make some kind of information play or are Astralis just going to sit forever and wait for you? It's that gamble right now. A little bit of weakness over at the A side, yeah. I mean, we'll find out. They, I, they probably feel they've been so close to this A attack a couple of times that they might as well try it again. Yeah. But this time, way earlier. So fast that Astralis might have been out of position. It looks like they're not, though. A lot of damage just from grenades once again onto G2. Excellent pick off, though. That's going to make it very hard. Sip, though, will still pick off Nexa inside of the smoke. He just came just jumping out to get the kill on him. And now it's been slowed down for G2. A little bit of a fight there, but Hunter will go down. Sip out in the lane. A little bit of an off uh, position there. Still going to be able to get that one. And um, now it's a two on three. And no one's in the B bomb side for Astralis, which is... It doesn't have... I mean, even if they get the bomb side and, and plant the bomb, Astralis should be able to retake it. But a strange point in the round, regardless. They're so on board with this now, Astralis, as well. They've cleared out mid. There's confirmation. Can Device make it back in time before they cross? You can see now Device realizes what is going on, that they have rotated through CT. Yeah, he doesn't want to cross this corner, though. If he keeps going around that corner, he is in so much danger. So, yeah, right here is where you want to be. And you don't need to do anything other than just listening and hearing. And that Molotov will be good confirmation. It's cool that they actually knew that. You can Molotov both that back corner and you can also Molotov the bomb plant from that position. So, all very interesting. Grenade. Not going to get any kills. Oh, I don't know if you saw that, did he? He's certainly not taking the shot now. They definitely do. Missed opportunity, but not for Dupree. Excellent headshot. And Nico, we've seen him clutch many, many times, but he is on 16 health in a one versus three, and the taps will not save him this time. It's going to be device to take him down instead, and a third round for Astralis, and critically, they survive with three members. So important that they keep, keep yeah, minimum three is what is, uh, Astralis really need right now on this CT side to build the bank so they can constantly drop rifles for their teammates and keep that economy flowing. That was really nicely done. Magus is fragging hard. It feels like, I mean, he's only at seven kills right now. And no, there's not really anybody lagging behind Zipnex, I guess, but he's playing B anchor, so that could be a rough life for you if you have to constantly retake. But I mean, on pit there, just locked it down when that A push came in from G2. And then the rotate over to bolster on B. Really liking what uh, what I'm seeing out of Magus right now. I bet you if we rewatch that last round, what we would find is that if G2 had somehow been three seconds earlier, they would have wrecked Astralis in that A-bomb side. Yeah. I, I think they only just got into position. Just missed the window. Yeah, uh, which is uh, that's upsetting in a bunch of different ways, but it, yeah, I think it still means that the idea was good, like the, from G2, right? Hard to... Hard to account for a three-second timing window, but I'm pretty sure it was something like that. Device could have been caught in the middle right then. Here we go. 
Trying to see if they can wrap Arch against the AWP. A lot of people there, and he's gonna get caught. <laughs> Shot in the back by the Tech Nines, but still, it's a pretty good output here. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Dupree needs to stay alive desperately. His team needs him for the retake. It's a great shot. And yeah, they're gonna come on for him. Kenny flanking it out. It looked like the bullet actually hit him before Kenny had even turned the corner. And Nico, same as it ever was. Now with a one versus two to try and clutch this. <laughs> this is crazy. And we are gonna go off the X-ray there at the end. Glaive just walks right into Nico, wins that duel hands down. But running Frenchman with pistols, Kenny. What uh, you know? What year is this? Just whipping around, whipping around corners, taking heads off. Definitely bring it back. Uh, that was uh, definitely Astralis, kind of getting uh, getting the better of Nico. Nico, it's not like he can win every clutch. You know, he can he can pull off God tier clutches. Only half of them. Yeah, I don't know. But you know, you got Zipnix. Uh, I don't know. Not everybody can be Zipnix Sanders. All right, so Astralis have been surviving in the last three rounds that they have uh, won in the row here. It's been uh, four members, then three, then two. So that means that, you know, they're doing more and more damage. And and two out of the last three rounds that G2 have lost here, two of them have been bomb plants, yeah. which, which also accounts for the money that they have. So there are some small details here that even in this losing scenario for, uh, for, for G2, at least in the sense of suddenly Astralis are back in, mm -hmm. are still kind of acceptable. So I, I wouldn't be too panicked, even at a four on five scoreline here. But if somehow the Danes could shut this next round completely down and not really lose that many people, that would obviously be way preferable to them. Uh, that would be terrific, without a doubt. They need some breathing room, I think. Not only if they have for the economy, just to get some confidence going. These rounds are getting a bit too close. Astralis are having to fight pretty fiercely here. So, HG, hey, again, that angle isn't quite there. Nico's just dodging the damage every time. Nice attempt at the wall bang. So close. He's just trying to wing it, but oh, the setup. The Vice and Zipnik working together. There's an attempt from Nexa to trade it, and he is going to get it. Brings it back to a four on four. Glaive is close, though, but he decides to back off and play it safe. Just like that, G2. Wow, Nexa's so lucky with his positioning there that he doesn't get roasted. But just, just like that, G2, control of top banana. Now they can set it up. And forcing out a lot of grenades on the Astralis side, um, which is super interesting. We'll look at the push though coming in from Ka from uh, Archway. Glaive just waiting at the edge. It's going to fade. Instant tap to take down Hunter. And they run into Dupree. And why would they even guess that there was a second player there? It doesn't even make any sense. Nice offensive uh, push coming out here on the A side. That's what we talked about earlier. Said they were starved for information, but that's how they brought it back right here. Just making sure that they could go and find them. Nexa now in a one versus three that he's turned into a one on two. But the bomb is out on the other side and he only has 30 seconds, so... Ah, man, this is going to be rough. Yeah, we've got the Nexa can popping up as well. His perspective. Instantly yeah. downed. I mean, it's such a difficult position to play from there. It's still two players surviving the round for Astralis means that that bank is getting hit. The Astralis are not able to really generate too much of a cushion here. And so the pressure is always on. With five rounds left in this first half, we are tied up five to five now. Astralis picking up the last four rounds in a row. Dupree, yeah, Dupree is always cheerful. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they feel like this is a pretty good comeback, but again, G2 keep doing the damage, and that's what's really important. Now we've got four Tech Nines running in against the M4 Glaive. It's a lot of damage that he managed to do there, and Sip will be able to pick up two. That's absolutely critical. And they had three people at the B bomb site right away which I th maybe G2 could have picked up on there. That makes me think that they were trying to punish Device. Oh, yeah, run him down when he has the orb. Yep, yeah. I think that's they were, you were definitely right. I don't think they were expecting there to be two M4s there ready to wombo combo, right? And Device is going to drop that bomb. Now it is on Kenny, and Device will collect his pound of flesh in the round regardless. He maybe wasn't there at the beginning, Anders, but he is there to finish it. Two shots with the op. But yeah, I think this is this is G2 trying to play after like, oh, you want to get clever? You want to have that op at Banana? Cool, just Tech 9 run you down, and then you just ran into two M4A4s. So. Seeing definitely some frustration out of Nico there. Yeah, I mean, you've just lost five rounds in a row now to Astralis, and you're letting them start to really get comfortable. Yeah, they have that bank that they didn't have just a round ago. Let's see. I mean, it's still a very open game. Don't mistake this for a... Uh, or anything conclusive. 
from either side. Nice grenade on Glaive and a follow up Ooh. to take him down to eight. That's such a nice adjustment. If you're going to play aggressive, cool. We'll just double H you the corner. Why not a third nade? <laughs> but there should it, always be a third. Uh, there should always be a third nade, right? But, like, uh, that's actually gotten Astralis to rotate Dupree over through CT. So there are three players on B right now, G2 with a minute town on the clock. They've got time to wait this out if they want. It's such a risk for Astralis doing this. They've really gambled on this and it might pay off. Three people here, a massive crossfire, even with the smokes, and it's not gonna be quite enough. No smoke for CT spawn either. Nico nearly going down through that one, but Hunter finding Sip inside, and they got Dupree as well. An absolute execution of device in the middle. Amanek was playing over there. I really don't even know how G2 fight their way through. It looked like Astralis had that one on lockdown. What happened to Zip? I mean, I get Glaive was low, but what happened to Zip there? Not a single kill? I think he was... Was he inside the smoke? Just not sure where he, where he was going? Yeah. I mean, it looked like... Well, I mean, Glaive is going to be hard-pressed. He was just so low on HP to do anything, right? But could have swore that Zip... Uh, I mean, Zip was there, so... That's Magus. I mean, he's going to take down Emanek, but I mean, there's, they're not going to be winning this round. He could get this AK. That's nice. The party favor. See if Nico lets him survive, though. Nico's already got the angle, and yeah, spots him. So, we'll get a replay here in a moment, and I'm curious to see, because it, it, it looked, it, you're right, it looked like Astralis just had the perfect setup to deal with this push coming in from G2. And this is Hunter moving forward. Yeah, and he's, he's just guessing. Wow. Wow. Very, very good thought, because if Sip was allowed to wait in there, he could have done all kinds of damage. Makes you wonder. All right. Well, interesting gamble. It doesn't pan out. 6-6, six, six, tied up. Might be even more of a victory for G2, knowing that they had that stack there and you still beat them. That's got to feel pretty good. Nice spray taking down Nico, though. Set up uh, with a flashbang from Sip and a grenade deep landing on both Nexer and Kenny. Speaking of Kenny, by the way, he's only got two kills in this first half, so that's Whoa. a bit rough. Need more than that. Just noticed that. Wow, yeah. He's having a rough time. And I mean, with a teammate, I mean, you're, you've got a teammate who's only got two kills, and yet you're still tied 6 6 at the, in the first half. Pat yourself on the back, G2. That's not easy. Goes to show that uh, Astralis are still mortal after all. So now, well, Glaive feeling a little bit of pressure here on the B site. And are they just going to power through this? It's looking like a G2. No fear. Only dreams. Glaive going to get his head taken off. There's Megas lining him up. Triple through. And it's all on Hunter now in a 1v3. Sticks that bomb. And he is going to get that bonus money for his team. He is going to be very hard pressed, however, to hold in this 1v3 clutch. He did all of that work with a UMP. That's definitely tricky. Well, let's see. Nico could do it. Could Hunter do it as well? We do need a clutch right here for G2. It's going to be a straight headshot to take down Sip, and now he's back for more, looking for the kill. They have to walk into this line. Molotov, though, will force him out. He gets one more headshot. It could have worked, and instead, it's going to be Device barely living through. Dupree actually got the kill, and even without the kit, they're going to be able to make it. Man, what a close round. Bomb has been defused. That's crazy from Maggie stuff. Four kills in that round more than making up for it and this is him just running through unreal he just saved the round yes and i was gonna be praising him at the start with how he dispatched nico there at the beginning on logs right that was the first kill for him uh that you know he's really stepped up individually right now he's making it happen for uh, astralis and then he has that monster performance there so sick Megas is really just the hero right now for astralis making the difference seven to six astralis take back the lead and it's a counter-terrorist timeout now from Astralis. Okay, so it's their first timeout getting called here. An extra 30 seconds to discuss. Well, 50 seconds, I guess, if you want to. If you want to be uh, nitpicky about it, Anders. Yeah, well, you know. Do you think it should just start after immediate, like, the 30 seconds? You're just extending the break by 30 seconds? Why do you get an extra buy time at the end of that, right? I don't know, but I feel like if we changed it now, everyone would complain and they would say, well, then the timeout should be, I don't know, more, you know. No, the time is 30 seconds, right? You get a buy time, you get a buy time of 20, and then you get, a, you can just have an additional 30 if you want it, right? But then the fact that you get another 20 on top of that, I don't know, it seems a bit excessive. All right, that's a discussion for another day. We'll see. Dupree with the aggression makes it out alive. That is the best case scenario there. A lot of info gained, and while well, he stays alive to keep the fight alive.
And that works so well with Device also being aggressive down middle at the same time. So like very, very hard for G2 to keep track of. Glaive at it through the smoke. Capri gonna be showing up against the one nearly the double. Nico almost going down. Three on three though. And we're gonna have to see some really good calls coming out of G2 to, to try and do something here, because they're in a bit of a rough position. Sip is all the way at the back of the site, and he might just try and play hide and seek for a, for a while here. You can hear them, certainly they're making a lot of noise, they're gonna go straight for it again. Not really slowing down, missing them all the top. It, it would be good to throw it in right on top of Sip, but they're not gonna be doing that. It's a little bit behind him. Does spread, and yep, now he's finally burning. Glaive also picking up a kill on Amanek, and that leaves Kenny in an absolutely dreadful position here. One versus three, I don't know how, I mean, whether or not he's been having a good game or not, this is just too much to ask for. He's going to get the kill on Glaive, and now they need to think about this, Astralis. Just don't give him a chance to, to run you down one at a time, and they do hide well enough, so Look another that round. movement, Anders. Yeah. That was silky smooth. He was so fast there, Kenny. Just one step ahead, though. One step ahead or one step behind, however you want to look at it. That is a tough break for Kenny, who's having a real rough first half. If that Molotov was just an inch closer to Sip from the start, then he burns almost right away, and it, it's just yep. going to be a mess. Yep, I thought it out. Oh, 15th round, this is it. Last round of the first half. Astralis up 8-6 to six on that CT side. Looking very good here. There's the shot from Device. Drops Kenny. Kenny just can't catch a break in That's this first half. Had to be Kenny. Just had to be him. What a rough start for him. It's really interesting how G2, when they show up outside of that B-bomb side, at least for the last two or three rounds, they don't slow. They just go right away. Um, I don't know about that. I mean, we'll see if it's going to be... Maybe leave it up to the analysts to decide whether or not that's a good idea or not. Ooh, that is not just a good idea. <laughs> Rock solid aim coming out. Wild spray, but they jump right over. Sip expecting maybe a jump up there. I'm not even sure if they're going to be wrapping around. They're going to check everything here. Finally, Nico going to go for the bomb plant, and nobody's coming through that smoke either. Grenade will do a bit, and that's fine. But um, three smokes and a flashbang here on Astralis to try and go for this retake. Let's see what they have. It's four on four, and a lot is riding on this. Attempting some wall bangs too, trying to get cute. You've got three kits as well, so you have a little bit of room to maneuver. But uh, now's the time to start getting in here, and behind the box, two of them in the dark corner, 4G2, four players, they decide to take the fight to Astralis. This is the way to do it, G2, as they move in. They have too many angles to check. Astralis, not enough room to pull this off, and they will go down. Eight to seven. Malik's thing that we paid for, and then some. It's eight to seven. It's right down the middle again here between Astralis and G2. It's a best of three, and it's a final map right here at Blast Premier, and it has been absolutely fantastic. Were those just like little cheek kisses or were the shoulder rubs involved? If it's shoulder rubbing, I think that is what you, that's what you need when you're playing a game this stressful. Sure, especially Candy might need it at this point in time. It's been a rough game for him. Now it's the second half. He's going to be on the CT side. He could do a lot more with that orb if they can buy it, especially early on. And Astralis are going to be on the T side. They have bought a lot of equipment here. I'm guessing B. I'm really wondering, yeah. The uh, execute, but also if Kenny's going to be able to turn it around now that he's on the uh, CT side here. I really do hope so. Because that'll make all the difference for G2. Considering the performance of the other four players on the team, if Kenny starts hitting shots, life is going to get real hard for Astralis real quick. There's so many people here on the other side. A little bit of a tag, Nico. He's got a grenade in hand. Did he land it perfectly? Well, he's going to take a lot of damage. He has no armor, so he's instantly on 17 health. Amanek at the back. Time to step it up. It's a nice headshot, and he's back in towards the bomb side. He's going to stick around and fight. This seems like absolute madness. There's so many people out there, and Magus will take him down. Nico soft from earlier, but it's still a three on four. He's got some backup coming in. They they can still win this round, G2. Uh, what was Device doing? Did, did, was it just me, or did you see him throw his Glock and just have his knife running up banana? It's a bold move. <laughs> bold move, Cotton. <laughs> Didn't work out for him, though. Look at Nexa. Can he do it? We're talking about a USP. All you need is really a couple of clicks. Doesn't sound that hard when you put it like that. They're right up in front. Oh, well, took a look. Too, too many there. Next to the ladder. There we go. Taking down Sipri Glaive. And he's going to continue. What a beast. 
I can't watch. <laughs> you're, oh, thinking, like, you're thinking this is this is every matchmaking ever when you're in that position. All the shots you're supposed to hit. Like the four shots that he whiffs on the guy who isn't moving. At first you're like, oh, no, not like this. Not like this. Oh, you see, when you see him miss all the shots, you're ready to just throw in the towel. You're yeah. like, that's it. Like that clutch is done. Ugh. And clearly Astralis just have no idea where the shots are coming from at first. <laughs> they really don't know. Oh, man. Well then, Anders, that is a way to start the uh, second half here. We're tied up again. It's been the theme of this map. The analysts are going to need like a three-hour break to, to just try and pick this one best of three apart. To digest it. It's outrageous what has been happening throughout this whole series. And what's even better, Anders, is that we have South American CS coming at us right after I know. this full best of three. And that's that's supposed to be the really spicy Counter-Strike, isn't it? You know, Ooh, it's gonna be, There's going to be a lot riding on the line there. There's gonna be a lot on that match. I actually can't. I actually can't wait for that game. I think it's really interesting. Oh, it's gonna be good. <laughs> it's gonna be a banger. But uh, that's coming right up after this map. This is the final map in this best of three. We're tied up one to one so far. Is free shooting a chicken in the middle of the round? Monster. Gotta get those priorities lined up. Listen, maybe you needed a snack. Yeah, but they just explode, don't they? So I'd, I'd much rather have have him eating chicken than the Snickers or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> There, but there aren't any Snickers on the map somewhere. So. <laughs> you don't, you don't know that. Well, it's a global brand, Anders. They might, they could be here in Italy. Okay. Well, maybe <laughs> trade it to the map. They don't have any armor, so as, as as much as they're setting this up and creeping closer and sort of pretending like, oh, here comes the big hit. I don't think it'll be a big hit. I think they're just gonna get slaughtered. Like they don't have any grenades to set it up or anything with. So yeah, one at a time here. And so far, no kills. Finally, one. But yes, that was just fine. No problems at all. Hunter going down right there, but um, 9 to 8. G2 in the lead. A one round lead. And this is the end of the dry spell for Kenny. Oh, He's got yeah, a fourth you're kill. Call it, you're calling it now? He's got a fourth kill, Anders. Four. Big plays. That's the. That's where he. That's where he just jumps off. That's where he's just going wild. Listen, every journey, right? Starts with. In this case, one kill. All right. How do you think? Uh, how do you think uh, Nico gets up to 38? Huh? Not exactly a Disney adventure, is it? <laughs> it's a Counter Strike adventure. All right. You know how does how does Nico get up to 38 kills? Huh? He starts with one kill. Yeah. <laughs> per second. <laughs> in in the round, it's. Yes. Should be making fun of Kenny. I actually think it's I, probably possible that he could do a lot better on the second half. So. I, in no way am I making fun of him. I've got total faith that he's going right. to start ripping heads off. Well, I would love to see it. I mean, if it, listen, if he does turn up on the second half, that could be all they need you to, to spin this into a win. So pressure is on, but at the same time, the uh, reward for, uh, for having a, a turnaround between first and second half would be pretty huge. Grenades. Strong is doing a similar thing here, right? Banana control. Checking out top mid a little bit, making sure that they're not, uh, you know, just too aggressive. Although they are really aggressive in middle. There's four people ready and waiting. Also means this B bomb site's going to be incredibly weak. I think Amanek with a UMP and no grenades. If they go B, I don't even know what G2 are meant to do. <laughs> Amanek, how much can you ask of one guy with a UMP? A lot. Yeah, apparently. I mean, how his team are asking the world. Oh, man. He needs it, but uh, save. Instant save. Uh, well, that, that was the buildup, and you see, guys, sometimes that's just the way it goes. It's not every time that you're going to have a triple kill or something like that. At least you trade one for one, right? No. Sometimes you just get your head ripped off. Hmm. And you're right. It is a wash of a round for a G2. But this is all according to plan, because we are supposed to pretty much stay tied as much as possible throughout this last round. Yeah, so it's contractually obliged to just... Keep, keep it closed. Nine to nine. I mean, this is it. I guess it seems a bit silly if you just look at what happened in the round, but, but the logic for G2 is instead of upgrading our weapons, we just keep the UMP, the MP9, and the other UMP. And if they come top mid, we're going to slaughter them with almost nothing. We're going to pick up AKs in the next round, and then we're all good to go. And if they don't, we're going to save the save the rifles and just go into the next round. So, yeah, it kind of gives Astralis a round back, and obviously it's tied up again. But I don't think it's it's not super crazy yet. Sucks to be Amanek, though. Yeah, that's you are kind of just hung out to dry there, aren't you? Cross your fingers. As soon as he starts hearing those footsteps, you know, his stomach is just, yeah, you know, dropping out. You're great. Oh, it was nice knowing you guys. 
But uh, that's it. End of the line. Tied up 9 9. And it is going to be the MP9 from uh, Amanek. But uh, look at this from G2. Four players over towards B at the beginning of this round. They really wanted to take the fight to Astralis. The nade battle is getting spicy. <laughs> That's cool. Look at that. He had essentially one little spot between the two Molotovs, and that's where they threw the grenade on him. The blade is not happy at all. Yeah. Look at the follow-up. Not going to catch him, though. And top banana control for Astralis. That's what they wanted. What are they going to do with it? Despite it all. Oh, that Molotov. Ooh. Interesting. Uh, instantly cancelled by Megis. He uses one of his smokes on that. Yeah, I'm probably thinking that they would turn the corner and fight him. So he's like, I, I've got to, mm. I've got to make sure I'm not also on fire while they're doing that. And they just jumped out. That's actually super critical. Nico just took a quick jump out and saw nobody. So that should increase their confidence in, in having this three-man setup over at A, quite a bit. Tiny risk. I mean, I mean, it is a risk taken by Nico, but that's pretty valuable information. Regardless, 40 seconds. They're going to go for it here. They have a lot of grenades left on the Astralis side. So this A defense, again, remember, it's not, not the best weaponry. It could get really, really tough. Well, Astralis have a billion nade seeds right now. So yeah, this is going to, this should be tough for G2. They, they should be all out nade warfare here from Astralis, making use of the superiority. Molly's going down right into the corner. The smoke not going to cancel it. Nexa getting toasty. Dupree is going to find one, but there's just a whole bunch of kills going Astralis' way. Blink of an eye. Including team kills. I thought there was a few. I thought there was an extra one there. I was like, wait a second. There weren't four players for G2 on A. There was, yeah. you know, th only three. One of them was Magus. Ah, okay. Let go in the middle of it. You know, you, you, you lead, and sometimes they're not happy with the leadership, Anders. And just, uh, you know, you know it's, it's, it gets messy on the front line. Yeah, I mean, whatever it takes to win, I guess. That was... That's a very nice execute, and it was made, I think the flashes made it so much better, but, you know, the little detail of the Molotov into the corner and all the rest of it, just very, very cool. Nico here looking for an upgrade. Straight headshot to take down Glaive, but as you could hear, the bomb is already essentially going to be blowing up. So, still not bad. Get that AK in play. Another round for Astralis, 10 to 9, and Dupree, well, he was actually all the way around the library. He wasn't far enough away. They don't care, they're gonna have the money, Astralis. G2, less so. And I think the economy right now is really what is gonna be important in this game. I think you take this round in the teeth if you're G2. No need for, oh, this is gonna be a tactical timeout, isn't it? Oh, no, last second buys, okay. Thought they were running it down there, not much getting spent until the very end there from G2, but yeah, this is going to be that half eco kind of uh, half buy sort of scenario for G2. Going to be counting on the next round to get the job done with the rifles. In the meantime, Astralis fully bought up on their side. No here they are looking to just lock this down. Well, it's two rounds. Uh, it was two rounds for G2, followed by two rounds for Astralis. And well, let's do it. Glaive is there to open it up, takes down Hunter. Saw the second man as well. Nico was spotted there. And that, it seems like with Nico spotted there, as well as the support nade coming in from the site, that's enough information for Astralis to think it's we got to go to A. There's an opening here. We got to take advantage. Yep. Super quick call. You're actually right on the map. That's exactly how they did it. And yeah, good call. Quick call. No hesitation from Astralis. We'll definitely get them that 11th round. And again, the job of Nico and Amanek here is just to stay alive and, and keep these weapons going. And we're still waiting for that Kenny's takeoff. Why, why you gotta call my boy like that, Andrew? He's, he's been ro I'm just, I'm, he's been rolling down the runway for a while, you know. Eventually, Samba, when when there is no more runway, you either have the speed to to take off or you don't. Yeah, but also that depends how fast you're going down that runway, right, Andrew? Right now, Kenny's is like on a tricycle. <laughs> 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 he's got a lot of runway ahead of him. When he starts picking up gears, you know, when he starts picking up gears, well, then we can start discussing on how short. All right. Well, in, oh, Nico, <laughs> this is not DM. For him, it is. So of. disgustingly clean. It's beautiful to watch. But unfortunately, in this time, it did not have the impact on, on the round. In this in this really stretched metaphor that we're going for, okay, he may be on a tricycle, but the runway is getting shorter on the other end. <laughs> so, oh, no. I'm just saying it's... <laughs> All right, it's my girl. This so way just gets ramped up. Yeah. These scenarios. 
dude. Yeah, this is it's just DM for him. I'm like, all right. Got those, got those, and yeah, Kenny's not looking pleased right now. But he's man, he's uh, he's always been a guy who wears his heart on his sleeve. Shows yeah. a lot of emotion, and if things are going against him like this, I could be sure he mean, he's probably gonna be getting down on himself. Now is not the time for it, though. I mean, nobody's really talking on G2, so I'm wondering if this is just them kind of sitting and uh, just having a moment to kind of think, you know? Breathe a second. Well, what you would want on, on the team, especially building it long-term, because these are so early days for them, right? Mm. And we're, we're obviously seeing the firepower. Nobody's going to be questioning the firepower on this team, but you want the internal chemistry, the atmosphere to... Yeah, to allow for even tough situations to be turned around all the rest of it, right? That takes time to build, like trust and time and all the rest of it. So might as well start early, get everyone fired up, make sure make sure someone can crack a joke or something every once in a while. Like something, say something stupid to make people feel better, you know? Mm -hmm. It works. 21st round, it's only 11 to 9. It's still many, many different ways in which G2 can get right back on top and into this game. The economy is a bit rough for them, not completely devastating, but it can make a difference here. Nico, smoke off. Oh, they're gonna go. They're so close. Amanek, one and then two headshots, one of them through the smoke, and Nico now he's ready. That is amazing from Amanek. And then the spray to follow. Triple kill for Amanek before he went down. What a save. The timing. The timing was there to crush that bomb site for Astralis. Nico was stuck with his back turned, looking up into the sky. But this from Amanek, this is wild. Just right before everything kicks off. Yeah. Just that's, Sometimes that's just the way it goes, Anders. The timing works out. It looks wonderful. It's clean. And that is uh, that is a round that Astralis just kind of have to shake off. It's not like you were particularly close in it. You just got smashed. And, and so wipe it out and move on. Device eating a bit of nade damage there in Banana as the smoke goes down. Again, three players, 4G2 on the B side early. Just to get a few more nades in the mix. And this might be baiting Astralis into it. Wow, yeah. Device doesn't even care. Just walks right through that. Sword. Nade. I'm just going to tag them up a little bit. Do they check for the boost? Probably not if they see Nico here. I mean, once there's a guy in the low ground, you're not going to be incentivized to also check for the boost at the same time. Eminek, big crossfire here. Nico dropping quite low. But Hunter is still there. Flashed for the minute, but yeah, they're not even looking at the moment. Oh, there we go. Device, who is the third man into the bomb site, does go for a check. Nico showing up, and he's still doing work, even low on health. Amanek, the third and final man on the bomb site, and they're going to find him. Megas flashed while he's getting that kill. 48 seconds, and now it's Keddy with the AWB looking for the potential boost, waiting for Nexa to show up, and there's no bomb plant yet here. The solo on health on the Astralis side, and now they even get picked off one, so... Nice shot from Nexa. Instant headshot to take down Magus. Another good round out of G2. Right back into a tied 11-11. And no bomb plants in the last two rounds for Travis. Yep. No bomb plants is really putting... Um, plants, rather, is uh, putting a lot of pressure on their economy. This is looking like it's going to be a half buy. Bomb pants. No bomb pants. Uh, listen, I think if you had exploding pants, that'd be a pretty... That's a problem, you know? It's like it's one thing to go to Taco Bell and have a late night, you know? But uh, yeah. <laughs> it's another if you start losing libs. Yeah, well, that's, I guess, something to, something to think about, <laughs> for sure. 23rd round here, and, um, yeah. Tech 9 on Sip, a little bit of armor, some flashbang on Magus. I'm sure he's going to try and flash them into either middle or, or, like, that short side of A. I mean, think about how quickly we went from Astralis, you know, feeling great, and, and just the, the cooling effect that's happening right now. Just two rounds in a row. It really has been these teams in this second half training uh, training rounds together. Why Kenny? Kenny getting Stop rushed Stop putting down. Kenny. Zip not known for his op. But he's now got one. I'm sure he's downloaded the software to play that as well. It's fine. He's, he's <laughs> into his brain, that is. Dupree goes down. And Nico will just be looking in there for that one. So they go for like a huge wraparound arch into library just to make Kenny feel even worse. They, it's, it's almost as if they are just targeting Kenny at this point. Four kills for Kenny. Absolute bastards. He's got three. He's got three assists, Sanders. He's got three assists. This, this, yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, it is. Oh man, he just runs through the mall. He, that's just so nasty again. He's just losing it. You hate to see it. But there is going to be a timeout called now from Astralis after that round of Eco. It is going to be a bye round. I mean, you hate to see it if they lose, but right now, Nexer is at 23 kills, Nico is at 23 kills. If they win this one, G2, I'm sure Kenny individually would probably be feeling like, man, I could have done so much more. But I still think it'll be all right. I think the, the, the thing is, like, if you have such an off game, you're still thinking that even if you win, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're probably, probably thinking, like, yeah, cool. I mean, obviously, you're not feeling terrible because you won, but you're also still pretty thinking, like, oh, man, thanks. You know, thank God for my teammates. Someone that, yeah, I mean, it's true. Help out. I mean, uh, I don't know. This is, uh, it's, it's just still so close. So hard to call. No bomb plan that round either for Astralis. So it's, it's worth, you know, you, you have to, you know, you could have added an extra $800, at least three of these rounds, probably. And when you subtract that instead, some of these buys, I mean, they're going to have fewer buys overall in the game, obviously. It, it just accumulates throughout. But, but also even the buys like these are just going to be way less impressive. Lacking many, many grenades. Okay, he's changed up his positioning now. So I'm very curious to see here. Does he wrap around or is he going to just hold? If we making a lot of noise in apartments. And yeah, now he decides, okay, time to get over here to short. Let's see if we can find a peek in mid. Does find some information. They're going to have to back off. That could force him in. No, it is going to be three players in mid here. Four Astralis putting the pressure on. Nexus there, but it's a firing squad. Three players for G2, ready and waiting. Glaive finds it, but Hunter's there to take it back. And it's a man advantage for G2 going into a real tight spot here for Astralis. And G2 should count their lucky stars that they actually make it out of that one. Nico, more headshots coming in all the time. He's going to get a lot of damage on the device as well. And then Molotov will slow it down enough that he gets some backup over here. Coming through the smoke, and Amanek is so ready device. That's actually an impressive shot. And let's see what he's got. Been a while since we've seen a clutch out of Astralis, and this time it's a one versus two. He's low on health, in fact, so low that any mistake here, and, and he's done for. He has to hit instant headshots, more or less. And they have a Molotov, so if they just throw it out here, we'll see what they do. But if they find out where he is, that Molotov could finish it all on its own. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's going to be in the corner. Some flashes coming out, more flashbangs. And they haven't found him yet. They've ditched that AWP on Kenny, and they're thinking about it. They've checked almost everywhere else. They feel like now, surely they know. And Device back here. So much time off the clock. Finally, they're going to go for that defuse. He's going to line it up, and they're not checking for it. It's Kenny again to go down. And Hunter will get the kill, but not enough time. This time, it's the Danes turn to pick up a clutch and a huge round. They just had no idea where he was. Oh, you just want to give Kenny a hug. I know. Listen. What a sick clutch from Device. Yeah, that was very, very well played. I mean, that's just so good. And, you know, it's an attempt. It's an attempt, but there it is. <laughs> Pure frustration. Glaive always just looks so happy right now, man. Right? I'm sure he is, yeah. Yeah, he's turned... He's found some key ingredient in life he's he's figured it out he's got that smile going man always looks really stoked good to see glad to see it this is this is all of the money nearly yeah from g2 put into this round and that i think is the really that's a horrifying thought that has to be in the back of their minds i wonder if they will would you want to do something different here you got an mp9 on nico do you want to run down the middle could try and go aggressive with it. Well, regardless, it looks like uh, that's not going to happen, at least for now. Daddy's over here, just setting up a bit of a grenade. Big moment here. Really for either team, but I think probably more than anything for uh, for Astralis to take a, a sizable lead. And really, really put G2 on the back foot all of a sudden. Nice shot from Kenny. But they're going to explode out right behind him. Nice quick one from Hunter. This is working out so well. Yeah, they're jumping out right on top of Nexa. That's what I was talking about. And he's going to get overrun. So that works anyway. It's because they were all the way up at the end of the apartment hallways there. They've done a lot of damage, but there's still a Molotov here on device. And that alone should be able to slow down this retake. G2. I'm sure Nico is calling it. If anyone asks, should we go? Should we save? I'm sure he'd want to do this. It goes with his personality. And that's a great start. Yep, taking down Dupree. 
Two nades lost. Still, Debris was the lowest HP, so Device and Zipnix together in this, and Device is going to get the drop on Nico. <laughs> Way too close. That That's was a heart stopper. Oh. And yeah, Amanek is going to back off and save the philosophy. He has to. There's no time left, and they are going to be able to make it out of here. Zipnix uh, holding on to the M4 device with an AUG down mid. A 13th round on the board for Astralo Sanders, and begins to mount on G2. I am... Because what do you do now? Look, uh, your yeah, money yeah. is broken, and do you let Astralo get up to 14? I'll tell you what. I think the fact that Hunter got that kill in middle meant that the people on the A-bomb side would have never been thinking that there was going to be an, an attack out those hallways. Because that's so yeah. on the T side of the map that they're just thinking, well, that's it. Like, you know, Kenny got a kill in the middle. Hunter's got another one. It's great. Like, two for nothing. We're good to go. And then suddenly, boom, they're on the A side a second later. Wow. 13 to 12, 26th round. Now you can see full on anti rush mode here from Astralis. Yeah. He's like, all right, we know you guys are not going to be well off economically. And so just waiting for any kind of craziness coming out of G2. If it was going to be a bunch of HEs in mid, down banana, or charge anywhere. Now that uh, enough time has gone by, they've figured out that that is not going to be the case right out the ga gates here from G2. Astralis now have control of top banana. And Amanek is trying to get some value out of this FAMAS, and he uh, certainly has a chance. Yes! A nice clean kill there on Zipnix. Needed that. How much are Astralis going to mind game themselves here? I mean... 50 waiting in here. That could do some damage. Interesting kill there. Hunter still up there. Ooh, the flashbang just, I think, offsetting things like a little bit. That would have been nice. Gonna be a kill for Magus as well. And it seems like even with that early kill from Amanek, it might not quite be enough. You almost wonder if Nexus should go back and try and find that AK over on the bridge. I think if you're Amanek, you need to run to the other side of the map or get just find a place to hide. Because uh, I'm pretty sure you're dropping the AWP for Kenny next round, and you want to hold on to that Kenny Kemba. Whoa, that was so good. He needed that so bad. Yeah, he's on the hunt for that AK. Yeah, sick. Get up here, take that from Zip, and go into the next round. This is a this is a monster. This is a monster play here for him. And him surviving like this, I can make all the difference in the next round for G2, and it is so important now for G2. Yeah, we're getting so late into the game that every every little detail is gonna matter. Here's a, here's a mindset to try and adopt, although it's so much easier to say than, than it is to actually do. But if you're Kenny right now, you surely have to be thinking, all I need to do is is to be relevant for one round. If I can do, if I, one round where I, you know, I'm the one to get the triple or something like that, or I clutch it 1v2, and then we're good to go. So, like, somehow keep your mind fresh on that one idea that, my round is coming, like, there's only, what, like, four rounds left? My round is going to be coming. Wow, this is this is such an intense game. 14 to 12. Astralis with the lead right now. And Kenny being aggressive with the AWP. He's looking up to see if he can find anyone on the bridge. Not going to happen right now. Slowly backing on out. Just wanted to be quick about it. And they're going to jump up that uh, balcony the silent way. Making sure not to make any noise at all. Oh, they've seen Kenny opping up there. So, we're just trying to play off the information. Gonna be a very passive hold coming in here from G2 towards A to start things off at least. Yeah, and same thing on B. Passive can be very bad. Again, the similar position where if any one of them go down here at the arch side, I mean, they're, now they're actually grouped up. That's interesting. Missed opportunity, but Hunter is going to be there to help him out. Huge, huge save out of Hunter. Again, if, if they go down on that side, that bomb side is going to get collapsed on immediately. But now instead, it's actually looking really doable here for G2. This is the only way that this works. When given the opportunity, hit your shots. If you're going to play this passively as G2 and let yeah. Astralis get all that real estate, if you miss your shots, the round is over because then they're on the bomb side immediately. But if you hit your shots the way G2 just have, it looks fantastic, right? But there's still 30 seconds on this clock. Astralis are not done yet, and they've got money in the bank to buy in the next round, too. But they're going to have to make up their minds. Is this B or A? There's, there's currently only a single player on the B site right now for G2. Astralis have a real chance, but that smoke going down so late. Now. And now it could be none of them. I was going to say, with 20 seconds, they, they only have one choice. I think it's saving right now. Oh, they must have been expecting for G2 to come look for them. Yeah. And, and just get a kill and then go. 
And that never happened, so... Wow. Essentially, the round being, being solved by a single kill there. But again, I... It's... That's on a knife's edge. Closer than it seems. I think Glaive relaunching the game real quick, and then we should be good to go. But it is 14 to 13. We're, get, we're really getting there. We might go the whole distance, it seems. Wireless headsets, I hope they're muting. I'm assuming they're going to the restroom real quick. Oh. You know, you never had that happen? No, but they're in a team. Listen, it's all part of the experience. <laughs> you know, I'm sure, I'm sure that happens every once in a while. But no, I have, I have thankfully so far avoided that. Device giving us a little flex. Yeah, he's got that sleeve on his arm, waiting, uh, you know, keeping, I guess, keeping his elbow and wrist somewhat warm. Just trying. I'm to... thinking it's the tattoos. It the tattoos. That's what they do in the NBA, right? They, 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 if they've got tattoos, they hide them. Or if they've got, what, unsavory tattoos, they hide them? Oh, that could be. The device has unsavory tattoos, though. He's got really sick tattoos, so I wonder why he's covering them. I think it is just for, for like, you know, I don't know, keeping up blood flow in the arm, making sure it doesn't get cold or anything. You know what? We can shoot him a question and ask him real quick. Maybe not now, although he's. I doubt he's looking at Twitter. I hope not. Yep. Definitely, definitely don't want to be doing that. All right. A little bit of a break. Glaive is back in the game. Everyone is ready. Nice little timeout. Now is the time to do it as well because um, it's it's so close. 28th round is the one that's coming up here. And I really still don't know who's going to be winning. I mean, Astronauts have, have clearly shown that they know what they're doing on the on the T side here. And I think G2 have been struggling a little bit. Once they ran out of money, it, it turned into a, a more difficult game for them. But they should have money now. Man, I'm so curious what you do here, though. I mean, um, if you're Astralis and they're taking the time, this is a tech timeout, but I mean, obviously, in these days, it's looking like a little chat is going on. Go a boost chatter, but they should be good to go. Go boost Kenny over at the at top banana. Make him look over that wall and just catch whoever is coming from Astralis to throw the grenade. Just a little trick. It doesn't have to be elaborate all the time, right? Put Kenny on your shoulders and see what happens. We're just uh, we're close to getting that, but um, but not quite. Waiting for the last little reset here. A couple of seconds away, surely. I think maybe it's just Malik that we're waiting for. Um, and then we'll we'll hopefully get right back into it. I'm just checking real quick. It's been such. Such an incredibly intense game. Um, if you are only just joining us now and you, and you somehow missed the first two maps, they are absolutely worth going back and watching because it, it was just it's been ah. it's been intense for sure. I'm wondering if they're getting warnings right now because in the rules 10.5.1.3 point Anders, all communication, including but not limited to text and voice communication between players and team coaches, is forbidden during a technical pause. Oh, and I'm seeing a lot of chatter. I'm seeing a lot of talk right now. Well, so uh, I don't know. They can get an infraction, first warning, right? But then uh, more severe sanctions can be imposed. So, um, you know, maybe they got a warning. I don't know. Maybe it's worth taking the warning right here at the end. So I just want everyone to be fresh and ready and all the rest of it. Let's get this going. I This is the full focus you need. You need all of your energy into this uh, last part of the game. It has been a marathon between these two. An instant shot down there, Hunter with the kill, and almost caught with the grenade in hand was Device. He's still going to be going down afterwards. A two-for-one trade, favoring G2. A nice sure force. So three people showing up there for G2. I think the uh, the final one in that, probably just throwing grenades, but Nico sticking around. That is greedy. A bold move. Really trying to put an end to Astralis right there. That's, you got to make those confidence plays sometimes. And, well, that one did not work for Nico. So we're back into a three-on-three -three in this critical round. 14 to 13, Astralis on the T side. Dupree catches Kenny out in mid. Missed opportunity there for both players. It would have been an absolutely epic move from Kenny. If he, would, if he got that shot, then, I mean, that is probably going to be tied. It might be even better than that. 45 seconds, Astralis ran out of time the last time and just decided to save, and surely not this time. They're going to go towards the B-bomb side, and I think that's where they're going to end up. Now, there is 
a smoke. There is an HE as well on Nexa and counter flashes. With 30 seconds, that is enough to slow down Astralis so that this is going to be very, very difficult. I think, I think they might be underestimating this a little bit here on the Danish side. 20 seconds now. Grenades are coming out. Surely going to be a grenade. There's the one HE put out. Not really going to do much. Oh, they're falling back. They want to go for it. And look at that. They're already rotating over. They've taken the entire bait. This is such a play from Astralis. And they're going to find out way too late. I think G2, if they want to retake this, they are going to have to be damn sure about it. Kenny goes down inside of the smoke. Oh, no. Oh, dear God, no. It's so hard to watch, isn't it? Man. And they're they're gonna lurk around on the edge of these of these smokes. And yeah, it's yeah. it's it's either you save the op and bail or you hope that somebody on Astralis makes a mistake and peeks you. Oh wow. And well right now it's looking like they're kinda trying to make up their mind. Emanek is hanging out here hoping perhaps to pick somebody off. Listen, they'll have the money at least on G2. That is the one thing to really think about. But what a fantastic call from Astralis. I really thought they were gonna go for that B bomb side and I, I I think if they had, they would have had to have run through the smoke that was put down by Nexa, and it would have just been a nightmare. And instead, they win the round with a hardly a shot fired, except for poor Kenny. Kenny's at six now. He's at six. You can't say that with a chip of voice, Sam. Like, <laughs> listen, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Oh, sometimes it just does not go your way. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Every player at one point has to have a game like this. Play for long enough, it's going to happen a couple of times. But it's could be always that, hard to deal with. Could be that it's Kenny who's having to adjust to different positions as well. You know, Nico added, to, added in, maybe there was some shifting that's happened and that's impacted his individual game. You don't know what's uh, necessarily going on behind the lines, but uh, this is still going to be a buy round out of G2. Astral is fully equipped. And this is dangerous, Nico. Nice HE, but they could peek him together. Missing the chance. Yeah, they do wanted to try and clever offset the angle. I think they thought there was an orb on the other side, so they just think, you know, what if we do that? Instantly put out. Fairly uh, good grenade saving so far on the G2 side. Still holding on to it. Oh, he's going to get flashed in. Is he really? That would no. He's no flashbang on Amex. So they did put out a flashbang, but Nico was just so far away. So now they've. They kind of use that. Oh, who's pushing up behind them in the middle? It's Hunter looking for them, and he's going to get Glaive. Now, that is a next-level play, because now they're really trapped here, Astralis. Even at 50 seconds, if they want to go back, they're going to have to check so much of the map. If they go for it, there's a stack. I think this is the 14th round for G2. It's all lined up for them. Nice shot from Device to the wall, though. Did that change it? The grenades are raining in. The flashbangs on top. They must hold on, or they're going to lose the map right here. Meg is held back by the one that's grenade in top of the entire lineup. That blows up all of Astralis. Amanek with a big double here. And it's going to be Sip in a one versus four. And that is just too much to handle. Amazing triple from Amanek. And overall, I mean, that just worked out so well. The grenades and that little move from Hunter. 15-14. And we're going to go the full distance. The 30th round is coming up. The 30th round, Anders. And this, yeah, it's all on Hunter late. I mean, 55 seconds pushing for info. I mean, mental. Solid, but yeah, that HG just catches everybody. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, timeout called by Astralis. Last attack timeout that they've got as well. So it's all in. Getting it done in 30 rounds with uh, a weak economy. Astralis do not have loads of cash. They can only afford two rifles and still have nades. A couple of them have to take the hit. Oh, what do you want to do in a round like this? Or I don't know. That's the thing. Man, what is your call here? Been, yeah. I mean, when I see the weapons, my mind goes to that A apartment play. Try and get, try yeah, and get, try and get them up quick. Yeah. Explode out of it, see what happens. Well, that's the early peak. Early play for info. They are charging. G2 know that this is a weak buy. And there it is. Device getting taken out immediately. But that wasn't one of the rifles. That was only one of the pistols. It was a Tech 9. Hunter going to get caught with the nade in his hand. Glaive is there to trade it. Kenny S needs to hit the shot. And he doesn't quite manage it. Four on four. I need a replay. Did he hit the chicken instead? I really need that replay. <laughs> if he did, it's just going to be too funny. Was that the chicken? You know, get down, Mr. President. Something like that. Trying to keep him alive. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. I'm going to need that production. 
30th round, and uh, this is what it is. Four on four, still a minute left. Some good grenades still on the G2 side, not a huge amount. I mean, especially up here at Top Banana, they're going to have to save these. Are they going to nade the corner? No, it's going to be a double nade to the... Yeah, well, to, not to the sandbags, but to the corner instead, so... Falling back. But G2 will know. Yeah, no one's showing up. We heard the nades and nothing else. So that... That piece of uh, disinformation has not worked out in favor of Astralis at the moment. And Kenny at the corner. And like I said, all you need is to keep your head in the game long enough to be relevant for one round. That has to do with the mentality. Nico showing up behind them to take down Magisk. That's a pretty good start here. 30 seconds and Kenny ready and waiting. And there's the kill on Glaive. That's what they need. Two away from getting into overtime. Kenny going to pick down Sip as well. And it's a one versus four for Dupree. And there should be just absolutely no way to make this work. All they need to do is not fight him. Stay alive, buy time, play it safe. Kenny will go down eventually. And inside a pit, yeah, Dupree might as well go straight for it. Otherwise, he's going to run out of time. So now one versus three. He's completely triangulated in here. Nexa goes down next. Slow. Dupree, he's hearing them step behind him. The timing is everything. He swings for it and he's going to go down. It will be overtime here on the final map. And I think that is about as good as he can get. Two kills for Kenny in a very critical round. Man. And then we're in overtime. Anders, it's not about having all sorts of kills. It's about getting kills when they matter most. And this time, you see Kenny delivers two kills for his team. I but man, Dupree played there, that perfectly. Zero people are buying that. So <laughs> no one. High impact for Alexanders. Well, the rest of them are just getting Miko kills. So, like, this isn't what I'm, I'm thinking about right here, but like, Dupree just played that perfectly. Such a shame he didn't get that shot on Emanek. Getting it down to a 1v1 would have been insane. But uh, we are going to get into overtime. Countdown has begun. Economies rejuvenated. And a bit of a tech issue. Interesting. Well, one of them is standing up, actually, so that's... Uh... We don't know what it is yet, but... That was Hunter. Maybe he's in uh, the restroom. Interesting. It's been a bit of a bit of time. Well, we've seen teams use tech for restroom breaks before. I'm not a fan. I think you should be using a tactical if you got to take a piss. You don't... But, uh, you know, there you go. Yeah. See, so now Zip is going, too. <laughs> I mean, that's the problem, though. It's, it is a, you know, it's a long game, so I'm sure everyone can appreciate it as well, you know. It hey, would, it Anders, would... I gotta take a piss right now. Yeah. You don't hear me calling for a tech pause. We don't get a tech pause or a tactical pause. So there's gonna be no sympathy for... Uh, for... See? No, we just... We, th no. That's the thing. But I, you gotta subscribe to the old... Uh, to the old. You, you remember that? Where it's just like, yeah, you, you play better when you have to go. All right? Focus is the mind. Oh, man. Maybe. Focuses the mind, Anders. We're speaking a little bit about uh, Kenny and, and him being further behind, but I mean, Glaive's only got 12 kills as well. So he's only, you know, Wait a not completely second. screwing this up, but both teams have one player that could that could do a, you know, that could do a something. What is going on here? I think Hunter is experiencing some loss in uh, in all of this, so that's just, uh, you know, him, him having an, in an internet slight hiccup, maybe? figure it all out now just i mean maybe we could just uh, talk through this a little bit because once <clears throat> once it goes into overtime I mean, apart from everyone obviously being quite fatigued at this point in time i think what it really does over time is it puts it puts so much pressure on the in-game leaders who suddenly have to sift through you know 30 rounds of uh, or 15 rounds at the very least playing on either side but uh, a lot of rounds where they have to think about what has worked what has the what have the, what have the other side been doing are there any sort of patterns and tendencies that we can we can sort of sort out and i just think that is that's where it gets really tricky being the leader of any one of these two teams right here and then uh suddenly money's back so that's also gonna maybe be helpful to g2 in having all the, the grenades that they could possibly want all right well just a quick uh, pause here we're getting things sorted out should be uh, in momentarily yeah, yeah, maybe the uh, server is also feeling a little bit fatigued after all of this. Could be. Listen, this has been, I mean, this has been a no joke game. of a game, yeah. Real marathon. A real marathon of a match. It's going to grind on everybody. Waiting in the sidelines, uh, if you forgot about the schedule, is obviously going to be uh, FURIA and uh, MIBR. So they are 
they're out there waiting to be tagged in for a whole new fresh best of three, and that in itself is going to be interesting. All right, we're going on a going on a you know trip to see the chickens. But Anders, I'm just going to take the uh, the opportunity. You know, not only does it is it long for the players, long for uh, for us, and well, the viewers as well at home, but it's long for production. So I want to give a quick shout out to production, to everybody making it happen over there at the Blast uh, uh, Space in Copenhagen. Prius, our observer, no breaks for him, always on the action, what a boss, what a god, and everybody in the production team as well, you guys are ballers, so big shout out to the crew. They do have, they do have some very, very long days. Um, yeah, last night, I mean, it's, 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 it's a tough one, so when it goes late, delays happen, it, uh, it, can get, it can get long, but hey, it's all good CS, that's the thing, it's all good CS, and we've got MIBR versus Furia coming up next, another best of three, starting immediately after this one. Is that the shot on the chicken? I think it was. <laughs> Kenny. I really think it was. Oh god. Well... The chickens days. are still a thing, after all this time. Well, it's, I mean, now, I don't know, now they're just there. They are. I can't keep complaining about Just them. like the benches, too. You know? Benches, chickens. The benches are still here, Anders. They're made of stone. Not really comfortable to sit on, but they're they're durable. Yeah, maybe that's why they've stuck around. Indeed. I've been replaced uh, at all this uh, time. Still the same benches after all these years. Who are we lacking now? Who's missing? Hunter. Still waiting on Hunter to get back in. All right. Well, um... Yeah, I, uh, do, I. Would you feel tempted to change your prediction? We both picked the Stralis. No, 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 no. I'm no, sticking nothing, with the Stralis. Nothing in your mind has said, ah, you know what? No. Even when G2 uh, beat up on Astralis and on Dust 2 at the beginning, you're, you're still thinking, well, it was if they'd have beat him 16 4 the way it was looking like, maybe, uh, yeah. that would have been a sad time. And maybe you start doubting, but then Astralis fight back. They start getting rounds on the board. You're starting to think, okay, they got some confidence back going into, into Nuke. Sure enough, Nuke goes Astralis' way. I mean,. These players are good, but I mean, it's still Astralis. And crunch time, this is where players are truly going to be tested. And again, it's Astralis. Uh, major, major, major champs. These guys do not mess around. And they should be thriving in these sorts of situations. So, so no. Should. I just I just enjoy, you know, G2 giving hope to the analysts and everybody else, you know, who predicted uh, G2, you know? I like it. It's just uh, it makes, dangerous to say. It makes things uh, just a little bit more spicy in the green room. A little bit more spicy on that desk. We'll see. We'll in the, see. In, in the chat later. <laughs> Pretty sure we're going to be finding out uh, exactly how it's going to be playing out here. I mean, it's uh, just waiting on the last guy to get back onto the server, and I think everyone else is ready, as far as I can tell. So, um, so yeah, just a little bit, uh, a little bit lacking. So let's see. Uh, you got. I mean, Maniac is trying to make plays. Yeah, you got it. He's up there with. Uh, he's up there with the best of us, right? So, uh, James, you know, G2 as well. And then Launders, but Launders is just, he's out there, dude. He just does things. Launders is really out there. He's predicted MIBR for the uh, second match, along with Scrawny. I think that's a bold play. It's a nice it's a nice way to try and get ahead. Oh, yeah, speaking of which, of course, there will be Scrawny and Launders kind of casting the next game. Yes, it will. Um, they are over in Copenhagen. I'm sure they're, et you know, just itching for it. They've been waiting for a long time. I'm sure everyone thought this game would be more or less done by now. Not quite so. Yeah, some good replays here. I mean, the amount of clutches and highlights throughout the course of this whole best of three, have, it's been way too much to summarize. So uh, I'm assuming that, uh, yeah, you'd have to go back and watch the whole thing if you really want the full experience. The highlights certainly help. Man, this is uh, it's really something. Is that Hunter back in? I think, I think I saw him back. So that could be... Should be getting close. That could be... Well, I think they're resetting the whole thing now. They're good to go. Seeing ready being called. I'm seeing people sort of acting like they're good for, for it. So we had a little bit of a... A little bit of a dip in the energy here. But we're going to get back into it for sure. Just need that reset. Ready up for G2. Yes. And um, let's see. Let's see what this is going to get us. We're finally back into it, ladies and gentlemen. Freeze time has been cancelled. It is overtime on the final map between Astralis and G2. Pressure still on G2. One detail here to note is that it's $10,000 starting money uh, going into this first half of overtime. And so on the CT side, that stings. You can see Kenny just going for a full buy, nearly tapped, nearly wiped his entire bank out already. So critical to G2. Managed to withstand the pressure here and get the strong start in this first half. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Don't want to be wiped in the first one. That always feels really weird. 
Not too much happening over at Banana. Just a, you know, a little quick exchange. And then we're done with it. Sip trying to bait out a shot with the tip of his AK-47. In case there was someone ready and waiting, but that doesn't really happen. And the smoke goes up. They are up in the apartments really quickly. Astralis usually, when they take a position like this, yeah, you can actually see already Glaive is back to check Banana. And that's such a key feature of how they play these things. Because, if you, again, if you let go of a place like Banana for too long, then G2 would go find out. So usually with like a 10 second interval or something, Astralis will go back and see, oh, is anyone looking? Okay, no one's looking. But this looks like a straight A execute. Uh, and they're going to be coming out of apartments again. And there's only two people on the bomb side. This could be an absolutely amazing call. I don't know how they're going to hold this bomb side. It is seconds away from falling. Grenades everywhere. HE on top of that Molotov and now inside of the site. They need backup badly. Hunter's going to be going down. Nexa, even a double spray. I don't think would have done it. That is the perfect call for what G2 were doing. It's just so clean as well. Hardly any damage taken apart from Zipnix getting taken out. I mean, it's just everybody else onto that site smoothly. And it also puts G2 in a really awkward spot. Although now, because they get that kill, nah, they, you know, uh, so no. far away. Yeah, it's a bit too much. But yeah, you see, now that's because of that economy, G2, rather than trying to go for some crazy heroics that we might get with 16,000, right? Here, they will hold on to the guns that they have going into the next round and try to guarantee that economy going forward. Um, Anders, how many years have we been casting Inferno? I mean... Many years. Many, many, um, many years. Coming up on eight or something. Dude, second mid. Prius. Oh, that's big. Device catches out Nico. One of those guns. Gone. But I just noticed that the second mid is called Dante. Yeah? I never noticed that. I've. How have I never noticed that? I'm sure... I'm sure we could be spending even more time looking at looking at all of it. Is that new? Dante's Inferno? Come on, get out of here. Oh, I, I think it's, it must have always been there. We just didn't pay, weren't paying attention. Okay, then. Well, details, details. 16th round for Astralis. First and 19, of course. Let's see. This is, again, all the time at the edge of a knife. Device on the other side. Grenades are all landing behind him. He's ready for the boost, and that's such a great way. Absolutely outplayed in that one. Some spray through catching Amanek a little bit, but oh man, Nico is not going to be happy about that. You just got red. Doing it again. This A site. The smoke is up, and then they're falling back, leaving just Nexa in the pit. If they actually go for it, they're falling back slowly, but if they actually went for it, that would be a knockout blow. They can set all. They can set everything up here. And I think that uh, right now, Astralis are gaming themselves. And whoever's getting this call on G two, do they? They. I mean, they come on. They have to commit. Ooh. It's still device just lurking over towards B. If they Molotov this position like they did last time, there's nothing that Nexa could do about it. Putting up a smoke will just delay the inevitable. It's 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 still gonna happen. Nexa getting caught there. They must have spotted them because they did a little bit of damage at least. So. Still thinking about it. Device checking it out, spotting a couple of people, or at least one of them jumping. And now they're going to come for him. Nexa getting shot through the smoke. They knew for sure, and that is absolutely well played for Astralis. Back-to-back -back rounds in overtime where it's mostly down to the call here. Strategically just outplaying G2 in the last two rounds here. Monster. And you just keep setting it up for G2. G2 just keep hoping that that action that they got on B was going to continue, oh, that Astralis yeah. were going to just keep hitting that B site. But Astralis, turns out they had another round in the bag. They had another trick up their sleeve, and this is working wonderfully. Two rounds on the T side in overtime. And that, and taking away that rifle was also, you know, really something. Yeah, look at the money right now. I mean, Kenny, he's going to give away his position. I don't know if they can get there in time. It's going to be really tough. Yeah. Glaive is the one who's thinking about it. And really, you should just be risking these AKs because you have money, and Kenny is not going to swap the op for an AK. Oh, yeah, definitely. Go for it right through. Gonna get the one Magus on the other side, and he gets him in the last second. Oh, man. I mean, they're still going to have some money to work with here, but definitely less than, than otherwise possible. But does Kenny go for an AWP here? Because if he saves that AWP, that's two rifles they could have dropped for his teammates. Now, he goes for the AWP, he spends all of his money. It's not, it's, not, it's not the end of the day. It's not a, the end of the day. Hunter has to go for a UMP just to get nades, but... 17-15, Astralis. Well, this is the... We're seeing the difference. Hey, hey, there we go. You see Via Dante. Now, is it from Dante's Inferno that in his will are peace? 
that quote comes from. I can't remember. It's, it's throwing me off now. And now that I noticed, I'm just like, really, is that the one? I don't know. I, Somebody will tell me online. But uh, this is definitely looking fantastic for Astralis in this second, uh, in this second half. Device a little bit emboldened, by, I think, by the fact that he caught that last fight, wanted to do it again. Would have been Amanek that he uh, that he could have headshot there. It's a nice attempt, but this time it doesn't go their way. Three at top mid for G2, pushed up quite far. So ready to take the fight if uh, if Astralis want to try and take that kind of map control. But it's slow right now. Let's see it, Nico. Turns away the flash. Could not be better timed. Impeccable stuff. And that's a setup where, I mean, if your astrologer just leaves your uh, your ears ringing, then Sandy are going to clear it out. So at least they have top banana control now, Astralis, but still hard pressed. And this time G2 are sticking to the boost on top mid. Yeah, they're still vulnerable if Dupree jumps up behind them in the apartments, but but if they can clean up the main part of this through the middle, it should be all right nonetheless. Oh, Hunter going down. Now I'm worried. Again, Dupree, this is the problem. He's right here, ready to pounce. So they're going to be pushing in the middle as well. Dupree looking for the angle. He sees the gun, and that's Kenny down and out. Next will fall next. Again, just one little thing going in the way of Astralis, and the whole bomb site collapses. That's three rounds in overtime going in favor of Astralis and all of them. Two on three, similar. They have all the grenades here. No <laughs> more smokes. I mean, I just, this would be, uh, they're going to need to call in Nico. They're going to clone Nico right now in this round to try and even make this work. It's going to be so rough. Astralis need to cool it down, use the grenades, use the smoke right on top. HG as well. Nico down to 20, and he is going to be long gone. All of the all of the attacks as well towards the A bomb side. They just found out that is what works, and Amanek is going to be dropped. 18 to 15. Astralis a single round away from taking this in device up at 29 kills. Man, those are some those are some devastating rounds. We we didn't really see rounds like this in regulation for, uh, for really, especially for Astralis. But this is something interesting. And you can see this is just completely deflated G2. The morale on that team right now, it's not looking hot. A lot of, a lot of silence. Nexo is doing a little bit of talking there, but uh, not much. Uh, they are going to be hard pressed here. As it is, yeah. yeah, match point, three of them for Astralis. And Astralis hitting A site all three times as well, just clearly threw G2 for a loop. And so Astralis, I mean, demonstrating that they are in G2's head. And, well, now it's on G2 to try and uh, shake things up. But oh. Device takes Nico out of the fight immediately. Yeah, they re I mean, they really manipulated them, uh, or manipulated their defense expertly in, in that overtime half. That's truly something. That first kill does not look good. Nico going down. How do you get back into this? G2 have to win three consecutive rounds of their own. In the first one, they have to do it in the four and five, being a man down. They could, I mean, they're still hanging out. They don't really have top mid or banana at the moment, so some time at least is what they have. This is essentially a kill away from, from not working out well for G2. They need that first shot going into the bomb site. Grenades up against Hunter, doesn't really do that much. The one against Kenny and Nexa definitely does. Magus, they come for the smoke and the flashbang somehow only worked against Amanek. He's going down to pre back here, 45 seconds, and it's a two on four. And is he seeing anything? He's just cleverly hiding back here. Bomb is not being planted, and more backup is coming, and I think G2 might have hit the end of the road here. It's going to be Kenny going down. Hunter in a one versus four, and he is going to get caught and found 19 to 15 as Astralis take down G2 in overtime and all three maps but they found a way to do it a really really hard played match for everyone involved what a phenomenal match winner's match of the group g2 definitely looking dejected but astralis now through and well an excellent